for the balcony with the lighting so okay yes over here please what do you know about hanjin i heard that they were on the verge of bankruptcy a month ago and that uh no one was going to be allowing them to dock and offload yeah, uh, Hanjin, the question is about Hanjin uh, on, on the verge of uh, bankruptcy. From what I know, I haven't followed up the story because I've been, you know, traveling a lot with the film, so I couldn't do the homework. Uh, but it's bankrupt uh, officially now. And uh, so the consequences, of course, are going to be huge for, uh, you know, for the populations and for the, uh, the industry itself. But I, I, don't really, I don't really want to speculate because I don't have a lot of, you know, uh, information about this company. There's a question over there. Yes. Yes. Hi, I'm uh, very important messages in your film. I'm wondering if you're using it in any other languages other than English. Yeah, yeah. The film is, uh, so the uh, original version is in English. It's been released in French and Spanish. Uh, that's all from what I know. But it's been in 20 countries already. That's the Canadian premiere, by the way. So you'll, that's the second screening we're having here in this country. And you're the uh, so you're part of the first people in the country seeing the film. I know uh, Tele Quebec is part of the uh, of the um, of the film of the production. So Quebec, the uh, the Quebecois audience is uh, sure going to see the film. Uh, we don't have any deal for distribution in theaters or uh, TV in the rest of uh, of the country yet. So I hope it's going to happen. And you know, if you are, if you think there's important things to know, uh, you can talk about the film. But I think that's what you know. That's what. Uh, that's our dream, basically, when we make this kind of film, we want people to talk about it and we want the message to go up and reach the, the spheres of, you know, uh, decision. So, so it's also in your hands. <laughs> uh, the, uh, there's a website that is a, 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 an ongoing uh, process. Uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty complete now. There's a lot of uh, books, to, uh, book references, there's uh, petitions there, uh, clips of the film that you haven't seen in the film. Uh, a lot of a lot of food uh, is in the, in the in the website too. So I uh, it's freighten.com. There was a question in the balcony. Yes, please. Uh, what is your next step regarding this topic? What is your next step regarding this topic? Uh, I'm walking along with this baby, and so it's three months old. This film is pretty young, uh, so I'm walking along with the baby to festivals. Uh, in two weeks, I'm going to have a very um, uh, tense and uh, interesting and fun, I'm sure, uh, meeting with the IMO uh, in London. <laughs> so I hope, they don't, I hope they don't break my legs. I know I've heard a lot. You know, I have new uh, new friends over there. But uh, I really think the IMO is uh, part of um, let's put it the positive way, part of the solution. Uh, and I really want them to uh, to look at the film. I know some of the people in there have looked at the film. Some of them have said this is a very provocative film and they have learned a lot of things, so that's pretty good. Uh, and we are going to talk, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just a little ant in the, in the whole, you know, I'm a grain of sand in the whole uh, process, but I hope uh, really they're going to take steps to um, change the way the, 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 uh, the organization is funded and uh, they are going to start to take steps also with regulations, with real regulations and enforced regulations to, uh, to make this industry more sustainable. I think that's really, that's really important now. Yes, at the back here, please. What can we do as individuals to help this along? I, you know, you've seen at the end of the film, a few minutes ago, I, I, that's a metaphor, I suggest a tag and transparency would be interesting because I don't want to put the blame on the uh, on the consumers. I don't want to put too much pressure on the consumers because we'll have to go through the day and we'll have you know lives to to build. And uh, I think there's a few things we can do if we can choose a product that comes for from a, a closer location that can make a difference. And um, but you know this this jacket uh, I bought it in Zara. Okay, so I'm part of the problem, but I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to. Uh, to uh, you know, to be uh, too self-critic because there's a lot of people. We we don't all have the purchasing power to uh, buy uh, two hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars Gucci jacket and made in Italy. Um, so 
I think it's not your fault if you want to buy stuff. Um, you have to be conscious. You have to be, you know, you have to choose in a, in the most um, conscientious way. But the industry who bring bring you this stuff has to do uh, the homework. Also, I think that's very important. There's two questions. Yes, there. please. I'm just wondering how you got access to film on that ship. So uh, how did we get, did we have the access to shoot on this ship? Uh, by the way, I have a little anecdote. Uh, last week I got a friend request on Facebook from the uh, the captain. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> And they accepted, of course, and was a little stressed. But, uh, and so, of course, the first thing he asked, you know, in the message, they okay, can I get a link to see the film? And, of course, I said yes. And so he watched the film, and we are still friends on Facebook. And uh, he said that was, you know, he, he also said he learned a lot of things, because, you know, he's in, in the industry since, uh, like, 20 years. Uh, but he there's a lot of things he didn't know. And he's going to talk about it. So that, I was like, "Wow, that's that's really cool." Um, we got access. We sent um, filming requests to about ten or eleven companies, European, uh, and we got this uh, German company who said yes, basically. Uh, and we had two choices: we could go on the North Sea. That was we shot that in the winter. We could go on the North Sea or in the Mediterranean. And that's, uh, I wanted to have good uh, hours of light. I wanted to have a sea where we could, you know, more or less stand on the ship. And uh, so we decided to go on the Mediterranean. We left from Barcelona. I was really interested in shooting uh, inside uh, the boat. I was not really interested in, in, the, uh, in the landscape because the landscape is always the same anyway. <laughs> and all the ports are all the same. So, And so we had good, hour, good hours of light. We had a, a one storm. And the last three days, that was a little hard, but it's you know we we get good images and so, on. so um, so yeah, that was that was pretty easy, and uh, the one of the difficulties uh, on board was to speak with the Filipinos because they are all afraid to lose their, their job basically. And one thing that is very interesting about this community is that they they go on board. And their plan at the beginning is to go for two or three years, save some money, and then you know make a grocery store and say, stay at home with the family and see the children uh, grow up. But they fall in the trap. Um, they earn 10 times more than uh, what they would earn at home. So the first year, it's hard to spend 10 months there. So it's hard when it, they go back home, they buy a house, and then they get a credit for a, a loan for the car and this and that. So they put the finger in the in this mechanic that never stops, and they spend uh, 30 years uh, on the sea. And there's a lot of drama, familiar, family stories that are pretty sad. Yeah. There was the other question here, yes. I was going to ask a similar question, but um, are there any companies that you think are doing a, a good job? And what about smaller ones who are just going from ports to port and have smaller things to check? Yeah, and are, are there companies that do a better job than, than others? And what about the small companies? I, I think the smallest, the smaller companies do a better job, and they are closer to their people. Basically, you've seen uh, John Fredrickson. This guy has never. He's just an example. He's just you know. I thought he was the most colorful guy because the other ones are pretty boring. Uh, <laughs> but he's never stepped onto a ship in his life. And so the smaller companies have a, a, a real relationship and a human, you know, uh, link with the people working there. And it's it's like you know it's like any company basically. This one is at sea, but you know any big company or a smaller company, well the the uh, the, the link um, is more you know is more is easier when you have um, ten employees than if you have you know ten thousand. Yes, there's a couple of questions in here. We'll, we'll stay in that section for a second, please. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the film. I learned an enormous amount, and I wish I could remember sometimes <laughs> all of it. But uh, I would like to ask, is it the IMO that can have any impact on stopping this system of flags of convenience? Because that seems to be one of the major problems in regulations going regarding workers, regarding uh, pollution, regarding everything. Is yeah. that where it comes from? Or how does, how does that be stopped? I mean, in some ways it's like 
you know, putting money off into Virgin Islands or wherever, you know. How is that stopped? Yeah, you're right, you're right. I think I, I also believe that the AMO is the, the nerve of the, uh, of the problem with this industry. And uh, uh, it really needs to uh, start doing the, doing the work, basically, and regulate. The problem, as you say, is that this organization, uh, many, actually, many um, organizations within the UN are self-funded. So they need money, also. Where does the money come from? They come from the, the, the price of convenience, because they have the biggest fleets in the world. That should be a reform. I don't know how they can do that, but I think that's, that would be the key in order to free them from their, you know, the interest, the uh, corporate interest, uh, and uh, and actually uh, write laws that are useful and that are that are needed. Um, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, get on the website in a couple of weeks and uh, we'll see how uh, they react. <laughs> yes, in here as well, please, and then we'll go to the balcony. Are you talking to me? Yes, please. Okay. Um, thank you for the show, and uh, in the beginning you showed some very influential people with lots of money who are involved in it, and this will be approached to them that what they are doing uh, by being, you know, being in the global system. Uh, so, you mean, should we show the film, should we bring the film to these guys? Yeah, yeah. can they be shown this film? I'm not sure I can organize that. <laughs> it would be hard for me to organize a private screening with all the industry here. <laughs> you know, we'll have to have like an airport security kind of thing. Um, there's, there's people in the industry who see the film. This film has been broadcast uh, in uh, several countries in Europe with several million uh, people uh, looking at the, watching the film. And uh, a lot of people in the, industry, in the industry have seen the film. So uh, basically after each uh, you know, broadcast, I received the day after I received like 3,000 mails. And there's one or two that are uh, very, uh, you know, very uh, not happy with the film. But usually uh, what the industry does, is, uh, they play that they don't say anything, so they don't give me, and they don't give the film more publicity. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a widespread technique when you uh, go after a big you know, corporation or company or uh, organization, if you have a, a critique of their job or position, what they would do if they are smart and well advised is that they don't do anything, basically. And that's what they do so far. I see a hand. Hard to see, but in the very back corner, we'd be missing. Yes, yes. please. Thank you very much for the film. Thank Besides you. Besides Europe, any other uh, network, television networks in the world have shown interest in showing the film? Mm -hmm. uh, so besides Europe, are there any uh, other networks interested in showing the film? That's an ongoing process. The film is pretty, uh, it's pretty recent. Um, and it's in distribution now, so uh, so yeah, you can we can we can be confident that it's going to be it's going to be uh, in many many countries. Yeah, and it's doing really well, and the uh, distributors are very happy. So if they are happy. I'm happy. The far balcony, please. Yes, up top. Uh, thank you very much for your documentary, and uh, uh, this question is not intended to be insulting, but were any of the experts in this film uh, receive any compensation for their opinion? No, no, no. That, that doesn't happen like that. Uh, when you make a documentary, you don't pay the people. Uh, if, you pay the, if you pay the people, then they are yours, and you can ask them to say what you want. So that, that never happens. I was one pro um, asked to pay for one uh, you know, interviewee in the film. That was the film. You mentioned Pax Americana. That was a few years ago. And uh, he wanted ten thousand dollars to speak to to do the interview. That was a half hour interview, and uh, so it, it was kind of a hard decision for me because the guy was Buzz Aldrin, and I said no. Uh, so he's not in the film. But we don't we don't usually pay people to speak. No, we don't do that. Yes, here, please. Me? Yes, please. Responsible, and I'm wondering how you can work with that into uh, consumer buying 
recycle things, and, and would that have an Negative or positive. Recycling, you know, uh, uh, there's a few films about the garment industry, and during the research of this film, which took two years, uh, of course, and I always say, you know, if the film is going to be like this, you have to know everything around. And uh, one of the figures I crossed uh, on the during the investigation was that um, in England and North America and uh, the U.S. Each person throws away 35 pounds of clothes every year. Um, so of course, recycling, I think, giving another life to uh, all the objects that surround us, I think that would be one of the uh, one of the principles of solutions. You know, that, that's that's clearly one of, one of the solutions. Yeah. Yes. Just a good time to remind that at 6 p.m. today at the Van City Theater. And he will be there. But the other director, Roger Williams, has uh, come with the film to the festival, River Blue, which is very much on this point. Yeah. Yes, we have, I think, time for two more. Let's take these quickly here, please. Yes, um, sir. You touched upon the Panama Canal expansion. Can you comment on the Nicaragua Canal? Also, walking distance from where we are sitting right now, the Port of Vancouver is actually inside a city, and it has a question of expansion. Yeah. So if you can't speak to that directly. Can you talk about port expansion inside cities in general? Yeah, so I don't, I don't know exactly what's uh, the, the project here in Vancouver. I'll just repeat. It's a question generally yeah. about port expansion. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what's going on in Vancouver. I heard there is the, the project, uh, the pipeline project, and. Uh, a project to expand the size and, and the capacity of the port. Uh, you've seen in the film that by 2020, this industry is going to triple. Basically, because well, you know uh, the population is uh, is growing, and we need uh, we need more you know uh, we need more stuff. And there's many regions in the world who are uh, developing, and they want to uh, you know to consume things that we all take for, for granted. So, so we have to bring them. Um, the Panama Canal was very interesting. We spent four days there. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I couldn't do more in the film because the screen time was very limited. So if I put more of this, I had to remove something else. Uh, but the Panama Canal is very uh, is very um, aggressive for the environment. I think it, it has opened now, but with five years of delay. You know, it was supposed to open uh, in 2011. A uh, lot of lot of uh, water waste. But it's Nicaragua as well. Nic Nicaragua is the same, the same story, and there's there's many uh, canals in Suez also. They are, they are now talking about expanding the canal because they need, you know, they, they, uh, this industry feels that you know because of the economy of scale uh, principles. If you have bigger ships and you can put more stuff on the ship, then you can save. So I mean, you don't save on the impact, but you save money uh, on on the cost of shipping. So yeah, so that's uh, that's where we're going. Yes, the final one here, please. Of the multiple environmental impacts, are there two or three that individuals can um, try to approach to advocate for, for change? Certain organizations, etc., that you would recommend? Because um, how I don't, can it, how I don't want to feel so uh, so limited in our ability. I know, I know. <laughs> what can we do? What's the most critical thing we can I do? I know, that's always a trick when you make this kind of film. You know, you want to empower the people, but I also want to be true, uh, you know, so it's kind of hard. Um, regarding, uh, yeah, what what can we do? Uh, what, what was the question? So, sorry, I got lost. What was the question again? For, uh, specific? Are there any Regarding the, uh, the environmental impact. Yeah? Advocacy yeah. as well. Uh, what I would suggest, you know, you've seen the Carbon War Room. This is a, a British organization. They are doing a wonderful job, uh, you know, uh, putting up all this uh, database uh, of the uh, environmental impact of, these, of the ships. And all the ships are now there. Uh, that's very important. That's very interesting. What we can do is be part of these organizations, basically, because ourselves as individuals, we are pretty limited in our, you know, in what we can do to impact the industry because it's a, you know, it's an industry that we don't really reach. We can't really, what, you know, see it and touch it. So um, there's a few organizations around the world who are doing a good job and they are 
offering, uh, you know, technologies and uh, and uh, ways to make this industry more sustainable. So that's what I would say. And the website again. That's why uh, we do the, this kind of website also to uh, to give you also a few doors uh, where you, that you can open and according to your you know your feelings and your sensibility where you know where do you want to press the button. There's a few ones we can we can press. All right. Thank you for helping us understand the problem better. Thank you for being here.